Hey, I'm Sam and I Design, and in the video today, I'm taking you through exporting and importing files into one of my favorite CAD programs, Shaper 3D. I've been using Shaper 3D for years now, and it really has become my go-to tool for doing design work in my daily workflow. A little bit about me and how I might use Shaper 3D in my workflow is I am an industrial designer. I specialize in furniture, lighting, and consumer electronics. And currently I'm working on a furniture range for a 3D printing company out in America. So what I'm going through today is my genuine live file for this project. It's not something that is made up for this tutorial. This is a genuine live file based on my genuine workflow with Shaper 3D. So this whole video is all about being able to export your files and then also re-import them back into Shaper 3D. Now you might say, Sam, why would you possibly need to do that? Well, usually you're not just the only designer working on a project. You might have other people, larger teams, more stakeholders, and they might not be using Shaper 3D. Some people might be PC based. Some people might be Mac based. And all of these different people in different teams, different stakeholders, even outside of the company will need to view the file, leave feedback, and being able to export these files is perfect to be able to work collaboratively. And it might also just be for your own benefit as well. If you're a single designer, you have your whole workflow from start to finish, you'll still need to export these models to be able to do things with it, whether it's 3D printing, sending to specialized visualizing software, and everything in between. Another reason might be that you're sending this file to people who don't know anything about 3D files at all. They just want to be able to see the object, spin it around. They don't have any CAD software. They just have access to the viewer. So being able to export this for other stakeholders who might not be 3D object minded is an amazing feature that you can do in Shaper 3D as well. Now, usually when companies ask me to cover their software, there's a strict clause in the contract that says I'm not allowed to mention any other software whatsoever. But we know that's not what it's like in the real world. We know that we can be fluent in different CAD softwares that give us different attributes to our CAD model. So for example, in this live file that we've got here, we can see my history, and that's because Shaper 3D is a completely parametric based software, and anything that I do earlier on in the feature tree, it's going to update later on as well. So as an example of that, I've got here my side profile sketch. This is the chair that I'm making uh, for Decibel, the 3D printing company. And in this side profile sketch, I can come in and maybe change the angle. And once I change the angle there, the whole chair is going to update, right? So I can do that again. I can change that back to 95. I think it was 95 <laughs> and everything updates. This way of working for me is amazing when I'm doing these sorts of furniture projects. What that means is that I can stay within the same design file and do so many different iterations, everything at a slightly different proportion, slightly different angle, and really hone in on the comfort of this chair. Now there are other videos on the internet and I even have one of myself going through the feature tree in Shaper 3D. So if you really wanna dive into parametric modeling and how to really hone those skills, go and check out those videos. This video today is all about exporting this file for other programs. So let's say, for example, that I've got this chair now, all of the perfect dimensions are there. I really honed in on all of the different angles. And now I want to share it with a program like Rhino, where I can really dial in some of those surfaces. Now, Rhino is great for surface modeling and really fine tuning um, models like that, but it's not good for parametric modeling. It can't keep updating all of the different angles and all of the different uh, surfaces. So the process that I was using was modeling all of this in Shaper 3D, doing all my different iterations, and then I would export to Rhino, and then I could really finesse some of those surfaces. In order to do that, it's really easy. All we have to do is come up here to the Share tab, click on Export, export the project, and now we're given a choice of so many different formats. Now this is almost the same as when you have either a Word document or an Apple Pages document, and you can transform those into a PDF that can be read by all sorts of different programs. This is exactly the same format here. It's all about taking the data that we have, 
and exporting it in different formats that different programs can read. Now, I want to export to Rhino, and that is a Surface-based system. And for that, I would really recommend using the STEP format. So STEP is a universally read system, and it's going to keep all of your nice, clean surfaces intact. So you can see here any of these lines on our model that is defining a surface, and um, anything that is plain gray, that is the span of the surface itself. So actually a step file is going to keep all of those in exactly the same orientation and make sure that we have a really nice model to work from in Rhino. Now there are other options for that as well. So I also like to use um, IGIS, I like to use OBJ, and I also like to use FBX as well. Those are the most universal. Uh, they each have their own quirks. And if one doesn't work, I export in the other and usually that works. That's not a shaper issue, that's a universal modeling uh, format issue. So let's say we go to step and we want to export the format. The um, AP242, that's going to save any uh, material splits and any material differences that you have. But you also have the different options as well, which might just package up the whole model as its own uh, color. Uh, all we have to do is name it, then we can press export and save that to wherever you want it to go. I'm on my iPad, I also work on PC. So what I like to do is have this exported to my cloud drive and I can just have it synced and instantly importable uh, on my PC. Or you could email it to yourself or you could save it on any other format, um, but I'm just going to save it here in the cloud. And then as soon as we do that, we can open up Rhino and continue modeling on exactly the same model as if it was built in Rhino natively. So in order to open that file in somewhere like Rhino, all we would have to do is go to File, then Open, find the file that I had saved, and use it in Rhino exactly the same way as usual. Now this tutorial is not for Rhino, so let's say that I've done some tweaks, I've made some surface tweaks, and now we're ready to bring it back into Shaper 3D. Now why would we do that? I could show you why in a second. To do that, all we have to do is come up here to the import. I'm going to use this file and I've saved the altered version into my uh, shared cloud. So all I have to do is import that. It's going to do the thinking and here it is in exactly the same spot. And you'll notice that I've done some minor, minor tweaks that is including uh, reworking some of these surfaces just to make sure they are completely uh, curvature continuous and also cutting in and making sure that our outer radius, our outer border of this chair is consistent all the way around and is going in there and surfacing that with a little bit more control by changing an individual surface rather than uh, the solid body surfaces that Shaper works in. So, like I mentioned, it looks exactly the same as the rest of the model, right? And we can even come up to um, the appearance, we can turn zebras on, and we can see all of these nice surfaces are now flowing really nicely, making sure that everything is importing nicely that we can see there. And the benefit is that we can still fully edit this file. This is completely editable in exactly the same way it was. So for example, I can come up here and select everything on this surface. I can then remove the surface. So we just have the line selected come up here to fill it and let's say a fill it of two so that we have a nice smooth edge running all the way around. And then I think it would be really nice to have that as a G2, really nice smooth uh, fill it so that it's not just a plain round um, element, it is a G2 curvature on there as well. And we can do that on the exact same on the other side and give that a G2 finish there. Perfect. Let's say that you have a project where you're halfway through and you wanna bring in some other elements like uh, screw fittings or fixtures, stuff that you don't want to model, but you already have saved in an external library. To do that when you're already in a scene, it's so simple. All you have to do is click three buttons here, press import, and then in exactly the same way as importing a file from scratch, you can add one into your scene. So as an example, now we can come in and reload this same chair again. 
And of course, it places exactly uh, over the top of the last one. And I can just move that so we can see. Here is our altered version with fillet. And in exactly the same way, here is our fresh import that we've just put into the same file. So in exactly the same way, everything is still just as editable as before. And the reason is that we would want to come back into Shape It 3D is because it has the visualization workflow built into the app itself. So for example, I can come up here now, press visualization. We change from the modeling mode over to visualization. And let's say I want to make this chair out of some form of plastic. So we can come up to all materials, press plastic, and then maybe use matte PVC. And then once we have that, we can uh, change the color of it. So let's say maybe slightly off white, maybe slightly cream white. And then we can change the environment and see where we would like to have this shown. So maybe something more dramatic and we can see all the nice clean surfaces in there, the perfect uh, radiuses that go around. Um, and we can also go ahead and change the rotation of that and maybe we show it with a nice shadow just on the leg there like that now that we have our model fully filleted fully adjusted and now with materials what we can do is export for someone in our team who doesn't have a visualization software doesn't have a cad uh, program and they just want to be able to see the file and leave comments um, in a web browser. It's so easy to do. All you need to do is come up to the share button, then we press create link. And what that's going to do is create a web-based viewer for that person, for this model, and they can view it on the browser and also in AR as well. So this is perfect for sharing with people in your team that don't have CAD software. You can uh, limit the access with a specific password and all they need to be able to view this now is to have this code. So I can copy that. I can go over to one I made earlier <laughs> as a test for this. The file loads up and now, as you can see, we have the perfect finished piece. We have all of our fillets in there really nicely and the material. And it's just a great way for someone to view the file who might not necessarily have a piece of CAD software. So now that we've exported it a couple of times, imported it a couple of times, there's another format that we can do as well. Let's say that you want to export this for 3D printing in particular. Now, STEP is not a good format for that. What you need is to be able to triangulate all of these surfaces to have just the surface data exported as an STL. Then a 3D printing software like Cura can slice that up and you can print really easily. So again, all you would need to do in that instance is export project, come down to STL, and then change the resolution of how tightly packed you want those triangles to be. The smaller the triangles, the better the resolution, and the lower the triangles, the lighter the file size will be. Be sure to check that you have the same units that you want to print in. I know when I send this file over to America, because that's where their production factory is, uh, we need to make sure that we're working in millimeters or inches and just be on the same system. And then you can even have options like including hidden items or making each individual part part of its own separate file. And then you can do that in exactly the same way. So you just press export and save it to your preferred location. And here is an example of that. I think it's really important to make sure that we are continuously checking our CAD data against real world samples. I know that we have the amazing viewer, we have the amazing AR system in Shape of 3D and the visualization system where you can look at different materials, different environments, but having it in your hand is the best way to be able to check proportions, even when it's a low scale like this one. I think this one was one fifth scale. I can't remember, but it's always important to make sure in the real world before you press print on the largest version possible. 
There is one more export type that I can talk about now, and it's a similar sort of format to what we were speaking about earlier on, but that is exporting specifically for product visualization software. Now, I know that we have the visualization tool here and we can go in and it looks amazing, but sometimes you need to take it that extra step further away from real time. So this is amazing because we can spin it around, zoom in to all the different details. This is real time rendering done live on the iPad. And we can even get in there and see all of that amazing detail. But sometimes you need to really elevate these renders to become something more of a marketing render or something for e-commerce on your website. For that, I would use a program like Keyshot. Shaper 3D and Keyshot work really well as a pair. So you can go to share, export and export projects and then Keyshot can read step really well. But I also love using OBJ and USDZ for Keyshot as well. The USDZ is an amazing format specifically used for AR systems, so lightweight models, high quality, but that keeps the textures imported really nicely as well. But in terms of universal export for Keyshot, I would recommend OBJ, Step, or IGES. And then in exactly the same way, you just go into Keyshot, you import the file, everything will look exactly as you left it here. But if you've been following my channel for a long time, you know I love programs like Keyshot and I don't think a video would be complete without me mentioning them. So now you know how much I'm using Shaper 3D in parallel with that as well. And while we're here talking about exporting as OBJ as well, I do know that OBJ plays really nicely with programs like Blender. So I like to import uh, files into Blender and I can do simulations like creating cushions and really soft body pieces as well. It's pretty much at the point that I think there is no program that you can't export to from Shaper 3D. So there it is. That is my genuine live project workflow using Shaper 3D and being fluent with other programs as well. Whether you're exporting or whether you're importing back into Shaper 3D, I hope this has made you realize that Shaper 3D can work alongside all of your other tools, whether you're importing or exporting. And let me know down in the comments below if you've learned anything in this video. I love reading about it. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.